Good morning everyone and welcome back to our Portuguese homestead. Today's video is a little bit different because I want to give you a tour of our property because I realized that I haven't done that in a couple of years and it's looking really nice right now so I want to show you everything we've built, what we're doing and what we've done over the last few years. Um, we're starting here at the very beginning of our property. Our property is uh, very rectangular and this is the very beginning. The first part is mostly olive field with some nice cork oaks in between. And it's bordered by this public path, dirt roads that we have to take every day. Hi Bo. It's just a bow right now because Puck is at school, of course. <laughs> but he's not interested in talking to you right now. Um, so this is the path that we take every morning to bring Puck to the bus, bus stop. As I said, we're walking past our olive field. This is our main field where we have most of the trees, but they're younger trees and they looked, well, we couldn't even see them when we bought the property. This was covered in rock rose and broom two, three meters high sometimes. So we could kind of vaguely see a couple olive trees and we could see on the cadastro that this is supposed to be an olive field, but we couldn't see them. So that was a little bit of a gamble. Turns out there were, are about a hundred olive trees on our property. Most of them are here. Uh, these are younger olive trees because they're still quite small and they were looking very rough. So we did a very very hard prune a few years ago and we haven't really had a good harvest from these trees at all but because we've had a very wet winter and the trees are finally starting to recover I'm starting to see lots of olives so hopefully fingers crossed if all goes to plan we'll finally have a good harvest from this field we suspect someone did take a couple olive trees while this land was abandoned because we can see holes um, kind of in line with some of the other trees but that doesn't matter because for the future we're planning to plant grapes here so that we also have a vineyard here we have another vineyard in case you're wondering but that's a 10 minute drive that way so we won't be looking at that today our vineyard is on granite soil which is basically sand and going into the future we don't think that that's going to be great and this is clay soil which holds moisture much better um, so we're planning to plant the same kind of size here which is about half an hectare half a hectare which is an acre for you Americans. Okay, as I said, when we bought this property five years ago already, it was very overgrown. We couldn't see anything. And so the day that we arrived, Martin had to strim. We just bought a strimmer the week before, strim out an area for our camper to park. And that was here. You can't really see the difference anymore because obviously Martin has cleared the rest of the field as well. So that's where we stayed for a couple weeks. And then uh, we took a little bit of time to clear another area, uh, a bigger area, but that we could level as well, which was here. And you can't really see it anymore, but this is where we stayed for almost a year in our camper van, uh, parked and we had a little shed in front of it. It was a whole thing. Anyway, so this is where we stayed the first nine months to a year until we got our yurt, which you will see in a moment. Uh, we have um, kind of a valley on our property. Most of our property is steep hillside or just like general hillside. And so when people say, oh, you should definitely buy a tractor because that's what real homesteaders do. A tractor wouldn't really do much for us other than this one uh, little field. It wouldn't be very useful for us. So uh, we do it with strimmer and then in the future we might get some animals to help with that kind of thing. But animals need shelter and we're still building shelters for ourselves. So we're not committing to that kind of thing right now. That first year Martin cleared 
a lot and it was a fun kind of discovery of things. This land had been farmed and used in the centuries before that. So we have a few little terraces here. This is where the camper had a couple of years, which is a really nice spot for guests. Uh, this is all level and we could park the camper here very nicely, but we sold it to a friend recently because he needed a new home and then here <laughs> we still have to clean up this area we had all the uh, some of our extra boxes for the bees and just some random things that you acquire when you are a homester they're like a random ibc that's for a project that we will share in a few weeks hopefully hello yeah so as we walk down into our valley, this is always the coolest spot in summer. Uh, we have the garden here, which I'll show you in a moment. If you can believe it, it was already strimmed this summer, but uh, <laughs> it's been very wet. And then over here on the other side of our valley, we have some of our bees. We have four colonies. And that kind of showed up this spring, which is really lovely. We have two there, two on the ridge there, next to the pond. We have two more colonies there. At some point we had many more, but we have a lot of Asian wasp pressure specifically, which um, they just catch the bees and eat them. We're not a fan. So in the future, we're gonna build an apiary with more protection for them. But for now, we just kind of work with what we have. This pond, Martin dug three winters ago already. As you can see, it's dried up right now. Over the winter, we had a lot of rain and when it was really full for most of the winter, which was really lovely, but it still needs sinking in and it needs just general work because there's a hole <laughs> so the people that came before us i don't know how long ago probably very long ago they had very clever water management systems um, so we have a lot of like walled channels but also underground coming from that valley there was an underground water a pipe made out of stone so it was really clearly a uh, made from very big stones to all the way to the channel there all the way underground and we hit that when Martin was digging this pond so it fills up the pond when it's raining a lot when the water management system is working and then once the pressure from that channel drops it all flows back into that channel and flows back into the earth. So it does keep water when there's a lot of pressure. And once that's gone, it can usually dries up within a couple of weeks. So in the future, when we have a working digger again, uh, it's going to get a whole rework. And then we're also going to figure out how we can, once all the holes are uh, filled, we're going to figure out how to actually have it keep water year round hopefully because this would be a very lovely place to go swimming here we also have our chicken enclosure we have it next to these brambles that are loving life right now because that keeps them shade gives them shade and is a little bit of protection for them and it gives us lots of lovely blackberries to eat in the summer um, we keep them enclosed right now because we had a fox attack a little while ago and because the, the grass was very tall the fox was taking a couple of chickens but we have since Martin mowed the grass and we've kept them inside no more chickens have been lost here we also have my garden and the greenhouse <laughs> So we have this greenhouse just as a season extender. I can plant tomatoes here earlier than, um, than in the garden. I built this raised bed over the winter and it's 
really not performing as I had hoped. I think it's the compost that we bought that was just not good enough. So I'm gonna work on that at the end of summer and maybe have a second round of tomatoes. I planted hollyhock here in the greenhouse without realizing how tall they get, uh, but I have no regrets because they look lovely. Okay, let's get out of here because yeah. it's hot. Yeah. After we finish this tour, we're gonna put a little bit of shade cloth over because otherwise it gets too hot over the summer. So over the summer we shade it out with shade cloth. Our whole garden is fenced. At first to keep the chickens out, but also to keep... Rabbits. The oh, the very first problem that we had was rabbits. We planted, uh, we were very excited to plant our first lettuce and then a rabbit came over and munched it all up. So the very first fence that we had was against rabbits. We no longer have those problems, but I have my beds here. Uh, we do a little bit of a modern take on flood irrigation where we do have a pipe where I can just open a tap and they all get flooded, all the channels. Um, and that works really nicely for us. Not much to eat out of the garden right now, except for the fava beans, the kind of last end of it, but all the tomatoes and green beans are Pretty happy, I would say, despite all the weird weather that we've had, and uh, we'll be eating from here soon. Oh, and here is our main source of water. Uh, this is our main well. We have a couple, but this is by far the biggest. We cleaned this the first summer that we were here, and it's due probably to have another clean within the next few years, because as you can see, there's a tree over it and just general debris that goes in. Um, but this is about eight meters deep of water. And then we hit rock. And then um, this is four or five meters wide. So that's a lot of water. The thing on top is called anora, which is the old fashioned way of getting water out of the well. As you can see, they just put a very big beam over top and then in the clamp over there, they would have a big wooden beam. And then here a donkey could walk around the well and the wheel would have buckets on it to get the water out of the well. We do want to restore or somehow get it working again in the future, but that's, that feels like a very big project. That's not a priority right now, um, but s sometime in the future, if we ever have a, a donkey <laughs> and we need it uh, to work, I think we can make it work again. Right now, we just have a pump that runs on solar um, and that can pump all the way to the top of our hillside. Yeah, it's a very heavy, heavy duty pump. Pumps a lot of water in a short time, runs on our solar, easy peasy. You don't have to struggle when you live off grid. As you do when you buy a homestead, you get very excited about planting fruit trees, uh, which we did. I just don't think we did it right. <laughs> we just didn't know enough about planting and tree care and that kind of stuff to do it properly. But we did plant a bunch of fruit trees here on this terrace. Some are doing better than others. This is an Asian pear that's doing pretty well. It will usually produce small fruits um, every year but not like nice enough to eat yet and we did have a nectarine tree over there that was doing really well making some nice fruit 
and then our toddler decided to pick them all before they were ripe. So that was nice. <laughs> but that's life with a toddler. Started to put like composted horse manure with the trees and kind of open up the ground to see if they will start growing a little bit more than what they're doing now. But we have things like cherries and apricots. We have a pomegranate. Orange trees. Orange trees. But none of them are performing well. The olive trees, however, these were a surprise. We didn't know that this was also, that they had olive trees here. But it was a nice surprise because these were older trees that were doing much better. Um, and we usually uh, can harvest a lot of olives here. This is our field. This is our field. <laughs> also been strimmed. It's also been strimmed one time this spring, but we're having a good, nice wet spring, which is, can't, can't really complain. This is our digger. It's been sat here for a year and a half. It's not been operational for much longer than that. Fun thing, we're gonna take the engine out again. <laughs> But more on that some other time or in a video that I will link um, for you to watch so that you know the whole story. This is our main living area. This was the last kind of flat bit before it gets really steep. And this was an area that we could clear um, in time before the yurt arrived. <laughs> because this is hillside, and because things kind of just developed as we were here for longer, for a longer period, um, we have the yurt here on a deck, uh, on a flat area that was cleared with that digger by the previous owner, Frank the digger. And then we realized that we didn't really want a kitchen inside because that gets way too hot over the summer. So we built our outdoor kitchen. In stages first we just built this main area and then we made a terrace and then we put a roof over the terrace and then we got a furniture set and we planted the passion fruit here that's shading this area during the summer which is really nice yeah this kitchen kind of just developed as we were here for longer and we could find things on uh, facebook marketplace but it has everything we need we have this counter space the top is granite which is lovely um, and then the bottom we had to paint and put new doors on we painted it white i don't know why that why i thought that was a good idea worst idea ever because you can see everything on it <laughs> impossible to keep clean if you live in a place like this it's just dusty and that's why I don't understand why the farmhouse kitchen aesthetic is all white. I don't have time to clean all day, every day. Uh, but uh, it is here. We learned from it. We have our stove, which is a uh, very old, but functional. We have a dishwasher, which we can run on our solar. Game changer, we love it. Um, and just uh, fridge freezer that we convert it into a fridge with i don't know it's universal a universal thermostat universal th thermostat and here we have our water filter i don't think we would go for a berkey again because we have clay soil and that me just means there's a lot of tiny clay particles in our well and this get clog gets clogged instantly instantly so we also get water from the the local fountain it's not big, it's always a little bit messy, but it's functional for now. Um, and we kind of n know better what we would do once we have a house, so what we would add to that kitchen there. So here are the parts that we usually don't show. Uh, we have our washing machine there, essential when you have kids, and the shower behind that. We have this old wine barrel. Um, that we fill with water from the well in the summer so that we can swim in it, which is lovely. And this is the pallet shed that we built two years ago. 
we had plans for it, but that involved working digger. So it is just a storage shed that you don't want to see inside. <laughs> shed for our shit. That's <laughs> but it stores all our messes. Mm -hmm. Just to give you the full picture, we run everything on our solar. We've talked about it before, um, but we have five panels that are 280 watts each. You can do the math on that. But there are four here in this array. And there's one yeah, outside. there are four here. And then we have another one next to our battery house that gets sun in the morning. And then inside we have our big Bluetti that we've talked about it before. This is not sponsored by them, but we do actually use the battery um, every day. And it's been really good for us. We currently live in this yurt that we put up four years ago. And this is 6.75 meters wide. But the deck that we built for it is a little bit too big. Um, so we have a video upcoming about what we're gonna do with that problem because it just doesn't work properly anymore. But it's a really nice yurt. I think we have lots of windows on the front, which is a kind of the luxury version for most yurts. A traditional yurt wouldn't have windows. Uh, like this, but it really helps to um, make it a little bit more light and airy, as well as a skylight with two windows on the top that can open. Uh, this is about how tidy it gets, because it is still a pretty small space with two young children that have their own stuff. Um, but yeah, they both have their own bed. Uh, not that Bo sleeps in his bed, um, but Pug does. <laughs> uh, this is mostly my desk at the moment. We have a nice seating area over there. And this is all our books, a radio, stuff for the kids, like puzzles and... Books for the kids. Books for... Lots of books for the kids. Uh, the Duplo. So that's why it gets messy here, because kids. These last five years, we've used only a pretty small area of our property, maybe about half. Uh, so just this little dip and then the olive field. But we have a whole hillside that way, which is, it's very hard to catch on camera how steep it actually is. Safe to say, if we have to walk up that way, I take two breaks because it's that steep. <laughs> But most of this is, well, close to our living area, it's all cleared. Because of fire regulations, this still has to be mowed for the year. But in general, it's just a couple cork oak. And then the further up we get, uh, we're really trying to bring back the old fashioned oak forest with some pines in between. And hopefully in the future we can plant some other more deciduous trees. All that takes time. But it's a really nice forest right now, I think. So this path was here. This was, you can also see that on the map that we got uh, from the Cadastro, which is, I think, officially for everyone to use, but only we use it. Uh, on this side, we have some more olive trees. These are the hardest to harvest because they're on a very steep slope. Um, but they're good trees, so we do harvest from them uh, in the winter. And then next to this willow tree, this willow tree was one of the reasons why we bought this property because we had seen the well, but we didn't really know how much water there was on top of that well. Willows like to stand in water, so we knew that there was more water here. And we were right, because in the winter there are several springs just going over the road, which is why the road 
is usually a little bit rough in the winter, but there's lots of water coming just straight out of the mountain, which is a really good sign. Like this, for example, is still here. Well, the rest of it is already pretty dry. dry. So while Martin was practicing his digger skills, he also made this little pond in, in a fairly delusional state. We started with a shovel that didn't last long. And then luckily we had the, po the digger uh, working at the time to make an extra pond. And I think there's still a little bit of water in there. A lot of water in there. And Louis likes to drink it from there, so. Um, all good things, and but in the future we might also rework this one. We just have to figure out how. So one of the things we added over the years is some extra little terraces, which is some of my... <laughs> One of my favorite places just because you can really see how much work people used to put into being able to farm places uh, this is a little bit of a, a valley as well with lots of fertile land and this is where we have my second garden which I've started to call the chaos garden because it still needs a lot of work <laughs> but there's lots of food growing as well this is where I've grown a lot of fava beans over the winter and where we have um, 14 more olive trees that are really good. So the, I think these, the two biggest trees here on these terraces are probably the oldest trees that we have. By now they're so tall that we use just to have them as decoration I think. We started to prune these trees though. We did a pretty hard prune over the winter and they're coming back really nicely. Yeah from from the neighbor we understand that they always kept their trees super super tall which is cool, but makes it very impossible to <laughs> harvest them, even with modern tools. So we've decided to start uh, chopping them down in stages because theoretically we could just cut them at the bottom, but we don't want to do that. So we're doing some rigorous pruning over a few years. So <laughs> this is chaos. Right now this needs cleaning before the summer but there are lots of favas that you will have seen in other videos. This is lupins that are also no longer flowering, but they're making really good pods. And I'm gonna harvest these for eating as well. It's tremoso. Tremoso. Kind of look like fava beans, but these are our typical Portuguese snack for with your beer. I'm just letting them uh, dry on the plants and then I can harvest them. And then the main reason that we bought, we added this, we bought these terraces. You can see that in the video here. Uh, we bought these terraces a few years ago from the neighbor. They also hadn't been used for 40 years or something, we understood from the neighbor that like the guy moved up to the city and never returned. So we bought them from them and cleaned it. And the main reason we bought it was the well. We just knew that there was a bunch of extra water here that we could use and in a dry climate like ours. More water is always better. <laughs> yeah, now we're walking up to all the things that we are adding to the property for the long term, for us to really use the whole of this property um, the way we wanted and to build a house in 
the future. It is still pretty steep here. <laughs> we are in the countryside. We are pretty rural, but I think a lot of people immediately think, oh, you're all alone, alone in the wilderness. <laughs> For us, that's not really the case. Um, the nice thing about this, or at least this part of rural Portugal, is that there's a lot of small villages and we are in walking distance of two small villages. Uh, one of them has the school and the farmacia and the the shop, uh, the mini mercado, so the, all the things that you would need on a daily basis we have. Uh, for the first couple of years it was just us here um, on this land and two years ago we uh, knew that the land next door was for sale. We didn't really want to buy it at the time just because we also didn't have the money, uh, but um, we recommended it to a friend and he moved on um, two years ago, which is really nice so we're not super isolated or we weren't isolated in the first place but now we're also not alone alone and now so from i don't know when they made these roads but for a long time people use the road that goes here and then up to the main road there this track was always in use but we want to use the top of our hillside so a few years ago, Martin made a road to the top of our hillside, which begins here uh, and is still a little bit of a work in progress. This will be the track that we take to our home once it's built. It's not super wide but wide enough for our car and small delivery trucks. We've had, as you can see from the Tufna here on the side, we've had stuff delivered here. It's just, they're not always excited to come here because part of it is pretty steep. But we're improving the road over time as we have a working digger. Frank the digger uh, worked for us for a day last month so he did a little bit on the road as well but it's a work in progress okay just a moment <laughs> so now we are on the top of our hillside pretty much the top is over there and uh, exactly on the other side of where we started this tour so we have lots of different land here. We have the olive field, we have the pond, we have the forest and I really like that about our property. That's so much variety. And uh, now we are in the forest. Up there. It's not there yet. <laughs> it's not there yet. I want to keep it a little bit of a surprise. So as I said Frank the Digger was here last month and he leveled out an area for us. That will be in an upcoming video. It's going to be exciting. And then here we have another little olive field with some really good trees. That was also a surprise to us. We found these when we this part of the property hadn't been cleared yet. And Martin's parents were watching Puck. We only had Puck at the time. And we decided to go exploring on our own land, which is always fun. And then we found these as a nice little surprise. And now that's a good working olive field. It's going to be a yeah. play, play area for the kids in the future. Once we start, really start spending time up here. Spending time up here. Yeah, as I said, we had a really wet winter and because we haven't really been working here, the flowers decided to start taking the space over again, which is um, all right for now. But we have had a delivery of sand and clay so that we can start working on the retaining wall. We did start a little bit earlier this spring and we've already covered it with the tarp again. So this is where we're going to build our earth bag house in the next few years. 
I'm thinking it will take a few years to fully complete this. But we did start already on the retaining wall. It's under the tarp already just to kind of figure out a system that works for us. And then we decided to shift gears for that surprise video that's coming up. <laughs> I think it will be fun and at the other end I'm also thinking maybe you will not understand but we have to do it so we we started and then we stopped again it is how life goes sometimes or Our life. for us at least <laughs> so that's the whole of our three hectare homestead here in central portugal as you saw lots of projects started some of them finished some not that's just how it goes um when you're doing everything on your own tempo uh, we have small kids uh, we had a baby in the last uh, few years so yeah all those things kind of take from just being able to build 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 but that's our life at least and we enjoy it and i hope you enjoyed this tour i hope you, it gave you a little bit more of an idea how everything is laid out uh, here on our property and that's it I hope you have a good weekend. Bye. Bye. <laughs>